We are so glad that you've come to worship with us this morning. If you are new or just checking us out, or if you have some prayer requests or needs, would you just take a moment to fill out our short communication card at wellspring.nyc forward slash info. We believe that God has something to say to you today. And so we invite you now to worship, to set your heart on Him as we sing and we open up the Word together. together with you guys face to face and we look forward to the day that we can 
um, please read the generosity liturgy with us. Holy, Holy Father, Father, there, there is, is nothing, nothing I have, have that you have, have not given me. All I have and am belong to you, bought with the blood of Jesus. To spend everything on myself and to give without sacrifice is the way of the world that you cannot abide. But generosity is the way of those who call Christ their Lord, who love him with free hearts and serve him with renewed minds, who withstand the delusion of riches that chokes the word, whose hearts are in your kingdom and not in the systems of the world. I am determined to increase in generosity until it can be said that there is no needy person among us. I am determined to be trustworthy with such a little thing as money that you may trust me with true riches. Above all, I am determined to be generous because you, Father, are generous. It is the delight of your daughters and sons to share your traits and to show what you are like to all the world. Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues lift one cry Then from north to south and east to west We'd hear Christ be magnified Were the whole earth echoing his eminence His name would burst from sea and sky From rivers to the mountain tops We'd hear Christ be magnified We're singing, oh, Christ be magnified, let his praise arise, Christ be magnified in me, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Where every creature finds its inmost melody And every human heart its native cry Oh, then in one enraptured hymn of praise We'll sing Christ, be magnified today you're worthy of every praise we magnify your name oh jesus come on let's sing this out together oh i won't bow to idols i'll stand strong and worship you if it puts me in the fire i'll rejoice because you're there too I won't be formed by feelings, I'll hold fast to what is true. If the cross brings transformation, you can hang me there with you. Cause death is just a doorway into resurrection life. If I join you in your suffering, then I'll join you when you rise. Come on! When you return in glory, with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing. Oh, my song will be the same. I'll say, oh, Christ be magnified. 
Hey everyone, my name is Joseph and I lead our youth ministry at Wellspring. I wanted to draw your attention to a few important things happening at church that you're going to want to be aware of. If you miss anything or you want to find out more about what is happening at Wellspring Church, you can always visit wellspring.nyc forward slash info. This Thursday, August 24th, Thank you. 
we are hosting a membership class on Zoom. And anyone is welcome to attend this informal meeting where you will learn all about Wellspring and have the opportunity to ask questions you might have about the church. If becoming a member of Wellspring is something you've always wondered about, or if you're looking to learn more about what membership means, please sign up for this class happening on Thursday, September 24th from 7 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. We share things every day, things that are meaningful to us, that entertain, inspire, or challenge us. We share moments, good or bad, big or small, because what we share matters. We have the chance to share something incredible, the hope that has transformed our lives. And today, more than ever, people are searching for hope, for connection, for meaning. The life we've experienced in Jesus is available to our friends and neighbors. And it's easier to share than we might think. Over the next few weeks, we are running Alpha, an opportunity to share Jesus with friends, family, and colleagues in person or online. Each week, we'll connect with each other, watch a short video, and have time to discuss our thoughts and questions without needing to have all the answers. All it takes is a simple invitation. Share life, faith, hope, Jesus. Who will you invite? Alpha is for anyone who wants to investigate Christianity. It's for those who are atheist, agnostic, skeptical, or unsure. And if you're a new Christian, Alpha is for you too. Alpha is for anyone who has given up on church. Alpha is really a series of online conversations that explore life, spirituality, and faith through a Christian lens. We create a non-judgmental and open environment where it's easy for anyone to express and explore their questions about life with new friends. Alpha will be happening on Zoom beginning this month, and we really hope that you will sign up at wellspring.nyc forward slash alpha. Good morning, Wellspring. My name is Genevieve. I am so excited to get to share with you an opportunity for all the women here at Wellspring. We are partnering together with several other NYC churches to put on a women's conference weekend called Refuse to Settle Spiritual Boot Camp. This will be taking place on October 16 through 18. There will be a combined worship night, several spiritual boot camp sessions, intensive prayer times, and a closing sermon to lead us into the remainder of 2020, emboldened by our time spent with God and each other. We are praying for new dimension to our relationship with God and to form new relationships with the women in our city. This event will be digital and will take place as a live stream retreat. So you can participate from wherever you are. That said, we also encourage you to form watch parties as you are comfortable and food and drink will be provided for your watch parties to enjoy and there's more to follow on that. You can register for this women's conference at wellspring.nyc forward slash info. And please invite your friends and family to join us as well. This event is open to women everywhere longing to connect to God in a greater way. We are so looking forward to what God is going to do. Okay, lastly, we are thrilled to announce that today is Group Launch Sunday. Authentic and meaningful relationships can sometimes be difficult to find in a city like New York, right? Th that's where community groups come in. If you're looking to meet new people and connect at Wellspring, community groups are really a great place to start. All group signups are live now, so please visit wellspring.nyc forward slash groups to sign up today. Now, since today is Group Launch Sunday, I think we have a few group leaders that want to say hi. Hey everybody, this is Mary Elizabeth Goodell, and I am so excited to be hosting the Praxis course as part of our community group season this fall. I am so excited to have conversations about your vocational journey, how you want to incorporate your faith and work, what it looks like to be more entrepreneurial in whatever kind of work context you're in, whether you want to start your own organization or you're working in any kind of job in any industry. 
um, any kind of context. Uh, there's all kinds of different ways that you can think more creatively about the way that you do your work. So I'm excited to have those conversations. Oh snap. What's up party people? Come join us. First and third Saturday at a story park. Workout, Bible study, and group discussion. Even if you've never come before, bring a friend and join in the fun. Good morning, Wellspring community. We are the Kotches, and we are pleased to be hosting a small, in-person community group Bible study at our home in Long Island City in the USA. We'd love to see you there. Hi, my name is Amanda, and I co-lead a community group along with Ken and Diana. We hope you can join us on Zoom on Friday nights for fellowship, prayer, and the study of God's word. I'm not leading a group at Well Spring, but my dad is. He's probably busy right now, just being cool. Yeah, our dad's so cool. We hope you join his group. You guys think I'm cool? Hi, I'm Rebecca Prince, and I lead a mom's Bible study here at Wellspring Church. This is a group for moms who want to connect with each other and pursue God together during the week, and who also may need to let their child run around in the back of the Zoom call or get up occasionally to give them a snack. This season, we're diving into Holiness by Nancy Lee DeMoss, and we'd love to have you join us. Separately from the Bible study, if you're a mom who's looking to get out of the house and meet up in person, I'm organizing some playground meetups. All that information will be on the website. I'm really looking forward to getting to know you all better this season. Thank you so much, group leaders. Now you can visit wellspring.nyc forward slash groups right now to sign up for a group that works for you. Now I know that was a lot of information. So remember, you can always visit wellspring.nyc forward slash info to make sure you stay up to date with everything that is going on. Thank you for worshiping with us today. Jesus asks us, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Picture yourself right now in an ideal setting for a conversation with a friend. A warm day, a slight cool breeze, the perfect cup of coffee in front of you, you're in a serene location. No distractions, no worries. And this friend, someone who is trusted, who is selfless, who has your best interests in mind, looks at you from across their latte, and they look into your eyes, truly seeing you, and they just ask, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? What's your response? You may not have the answer immediately. It probably doesn't easily come to you. Coming up with that kind of answer may even create a low level of anxiety inside of you. However, just the simple offer of this friend to want to ask and to be willing to uncover and talk about how you're doing in and of itself does bring some comfort. So perhaps you stammer a little bit and you say, I I'm okay, I'm fine. I mean, I'm exhausted, but things are going well, all things considered. I still have a job. The kids are in school, kind of. I have my health. You notice that? You see all the default responses there that many of us probably fall into when we're answering these kinds of questions. How are you doing? Are you okay? The kind of questions that honestly require some soul searching if we're going to answer deep down with truth. But instead, what we often do is we answer it by pointing to outward indicators of our health or of success to prove to others or maybe even to prove to ourselves that we're okay, we're fine. But the truth is, nothing from the outside, a job, a home, a relationship, an education, none of that can fully reveal whether our souls are healthy, whether our heart is actually soft, whether our burden is light and we are free and we're filled with joy. Because you see, your soul is the real you. 
It's what exists deep down. It is from your soul that all the other things flow and no amount of success or distraction or a new school system or a better apartment or a different city can cover up and transform the state of your soul. See, a healthy soul transcends and it transforms what's going on in the external. But an unhealthy soul can bring you to ruin. This is what Dallas Willard says. What is running your life at any given moment is your soul. Not external circumstances, not your thoughts, not your intentions, not even your feelings, but your soul. The soul is that aspect of your whole being that correlates, integrates, and enlivens everything going on in the various dimensions of the self. The soul is the life center of human beings. If your soul is healthy, no external circumstance can destroy your life. If your soul is unhealthy, no external circumstance can redeem your life. Yet so often, we avoid the care of our own souls. Perhaps you're afraid of the contradictions you might find in yourself if you really answered the question, are you okay? How are you doing? Perhaps you just don't know where or even how to begin to answer that kind of question. Perhaps you're just too busy and there are too many important need to get done or has to come first issues in your life that you always place ahead of your own heart and ahead of your own soul. Perhaps even there is a fear of what is actually laid bare inside of you, what comes to the surface if the state of your soul is uncovered. What would be revealed as the primary influences over you? What would come to the surface as your true motives and desires? Would you come to find that your life and your own influence over it in the state of your own soul is perhaps a lot less in your control than you ever realized? Well, you see, I think on some level for all of us, because we're all human, the answer is yes. The answer is yes to all of those things. Because as people, we're, we're constantly being formed. We're constantly being shaped. We are being seduced and inspired. We're being turned off. We're being manipulated. We're being all coerced by forces all around us that are all seeking to vie for first place in our lives. They want control of our souls, control of our worship and our heart and our intentions. You see, I think one of the greatest schemes of the enemy is to delude us into the reality of that truth. The great myth that the enemy perpetuates is that there is such a thing as spiritual neutrality. There's actually not things that are vying for our attentions at all times. And if we're not focusing on our soul, that's okay. We're just in a place of neutrality. And I think he wants us to believe that because if we buy into that, we just might fall asleep on the formation of our souls. And in doing so, what we're doing is giving over that formational power to him and to the spirit of the age and to the world. But that's exactly where Jesus steps in. You see, because Jesus is the one who came to give us life and for us to have that life abundantly. He is the lover and the restorer of our souls. He has come to offer an entirely different way, a, to, a way to live into the rhythms of grace and to live freely and lightly. The good news is that Jesus is the ultimate best friend sitting across from us at that table and asking us, hey, how are you doing? Are you okay? And that's because Jesus cares deeply about your soul. In fact, stepping into the way of Jesus is an invitation, really, to just to revive your soul, for soul rest and for soul freedom. Jesus says this in Matthew 11, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Or I love the way Eugene Peterson has translated this same text through the message. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. 
And it is from that reality and that invitation from Jesus that we here as Wellspring, as a community, are stepping into this series that we're beginning today and really into an entire discipleship pathway that we are calling Rhythms. This is an invitation for all of us. The invitation is for all of us to join together and be intentional about the formation of our souls and to be intentional about the design of our lives. Now, I want to be honest, this is nothing new. It's not a groundbreaking discipleship pathway. I can take zero credit for the core truth and the foundation of what rhythms is. And that's because Jesus created it first. In fact, he lived it out himself. And then from then, thousands of years of disciples have also attempted to do that as well. But I also believe that the heart and the approach behind rhythms is fresh and for right now. And isn't that kind of the way that the living word of God always tends to work, right? It is live and it is active. And we are being invited as the people of God to take a fresh look at the core of our lives and our discipleship to Jesus. And then I think from that place of assessment to begin to re-architect it. That's one of the benefits, I think, of disruption, which obviously in this season right now, in our city, in our nation, in our world, we are completely being disrupted more than any other, perhaps. Our default rhythms are just all jacked up. And in doing so, though, I believe it's allowed a lot of reality to come to the surface. It hasn't changed reality in as much as it's highlighted what has already been there. Insecurities, idols, dependencies, coping mechanisms, or lack thereof. And see, what I believe is that we are being invited as a community to reassess and restructure the very framework of our lives, to ask the questions about what actually drives our day, what drives our time, what motivates our hearts, what is forming us. And ultimately, we are being invited to live a life that models our mind and our body in a practical way, what we are saying we believe or want to believe at our core. And there's not a better time to do that when most of our lives and our structures and our schedules have been blown up anyway, as they have right now. This is the perfect time to redesign your rhythms. And I believe the very foundation for this framework has actually been given to us by Jesus. And I think he gave that to us when he gave us the greatest commandment in the Gospels. Right? He said this is the secret to eternal life, the most important aspect of our faith. It's the guidepost for our life. And he sums it up in a statement when he's asked. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And so what we're doing is directly from these words of Jesus, we are creating the blueprint for rhythms. We are going to look at how we love God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and how we love our neighbor as ourselves. And what we're going to do is seek to build rhythms around each of those categories, which will ultimately then create what we're calling a rhythm of life. This means a rule or overarching template that you are committed to as a framework for living out the way of Jesus. And we're going to build that from the greatest commandment. So for example, we will speak into these categories each week, by the way. We're going to break them down weekly. But if you want to look at the heart, for example, like we'll do next week, what we want to do is we want to develop rhythms of daily prayer that keeps our hearts soft and it enables us to walk and step with the movement of the Spirit. Or we'll look at the soul and create rhythms around the soul. It's important to create rhythms of saying yes and saying no. We want to say yes to healthy practices, like keeping a gratitude journal and saying no to certain other practices that would deteriorate our souls, like tracking the endless news cycle, or allowing your phone to be the last thing you look at when you go to sleep, and the first thing that speaks to you when you wake up. These soul rhythms will help you stay emotionally healthy and in tune to your inner life. Or mind rhythms, right? This will move us toward daily time in scripture, sharpening our minds through reading, meditating, memorization, as we allow the words of God to form our way of thinking and our perspective. Ultimately, all of these rhythms are taken directly from the words and the life of Jesus. And what they will do is they will make up our own personal and then collectively shared rhythm of life. I'm defining it like this. A rhythm of life is a personal framework of rhythms, practices, relationships, patterns, and community that help shape your life journey 
around the way of Jesus. So again, this is not new. It's actually ancient. It's not complex, but it is life-changing. We see this is an idea of an intentional way of living. And it's not only from Jesus in the early church where they certainly lived this out, but also this idea comes from the Desert Fathers and monastic communities from centuries ago. They developed out what they called a rule of life. And what they did is they endeavored to be a community who chose to do life together, and they wanted to do that around a specific set of rules or disciplines that made up what then they called their rule of life. It was both personal and it was also communal. And in it, they found life in all its fullness. They tried to walk and step in the way of Jesus. Now, I want to take a moment here and pause um, because I want to acknowledge that for some of you, this sounds fantastic. I have no doubt in the conversations I've been having uh, with people in their discipleship journey and their faith in this moment. Many of you, I'm sure, are like, this is exactly what we need to institute in our family life, or this is exactly what I need in my personal life. I need healthy rhythms in this season, and I need to redesign my life in this way, and it's already resonating with you, and you can't wait to dive in. But at the same time, and it could be also another piece of you, or this could be the full camp that you're in, where you're saying, "Um, this sounds like a lot. I'm already maxed out. I'm already so busy and overwhelmed and don't know what's next. And now you're telling me to live the right way. I need to add on rhythms for my heart and my soul and my mind and my strength and my neighbor. Well, I get that. But hold on for a moment. That's a completely understandable perspective, but I want to share with you a different perspective and intent when looking at rhythms. Because you see, the perspective of seeing it as a bunch of rules and tasks is actually what's derailed the church for generations, right? It is the perspective that actually hurls us down the path of what is often referred to as legalism. And that's not what we're after. That's what happens when we make it about a set of rules or a set of practices and disciplines that we need to do as opposed to looking at it as a lifestyle that we're living out, right? It is a lifestyle that we live in with relationship with a person who infinitely loves us and brings us freedom. See, it's not always about doing more. In fact, what you'll find in rhythms, it's often about doing less. It's about reordering your life, reordering your intentions and your non-negotiables and architecting your life around a person, around Jesus. See, the rhythms themselves are not the end game. That's, that's not important, and perhaps some of them will change seasonally. See, the end game of all of this is Jesus himself. It's God. It is a lifestyle of ongoing communion with the Trinity. That's what we're after. So this is not a, a set, a new look at a, like a New Year's resolution of obligations for the Christian life. No, it's a lifelong invitation to join a dance with our Creator. You see, the reason I actually love the word rhythm in particular is because it speaks of ongoing movement, of repetition, which drives our formation. It it speaks to addition and also subtraction, and it all points towards something greater. The Merriam-Webster definition of rhythm is actually an ordered recurrent alternation of strong and weak elements in the flow of sound and silence in speech. At its core, from the Greek of rhythm, it means to flow. Rhythm in music is essentially actually what makes the music move, right? It's what drives us to want to dance when a song comes on. It's what makes us tap our feet, right? The rhythm itself is not the end goal of creating a song. We understand that. We create a song to tell a story, for example, to evoke emotion, to derive beauty. But you actually can't have a song without rhythm. It's the very foundation to the flow and the movement of the song. It's what holds it all together. See, the right rhythm allows music to flow. And I believe, because Jesus demonstrated that for us, that the right and good and healthy rhythms in our lives will allow us to flow more freely because it allows us to move as we were intended to. You see, Jesus actually himself very much had a rhythm to his life. He was not only a great teacher who taught us principles, but he very specifically, in his methodology as God, chose to come down as a human being. He wanted to embody humanity, 
And he did so perfectly, in fact. He embodied a kind of light, uh, sorry, a kind of life that was in constant communion with him, with, with, with himself, with God, with God the Father, with the Holy Spirit. It was a life that was never hurried. It was a life that was never rushed, a life that was free of anxiety. He was known as, as someone who was anointed with the oil of gladness, the most joyful person, basically, to ever walk the, work, walk the earth. And yet, at the same time, his life was full of purpose, full of intentionality, and full of value. See, the core idea behind designing a rhythm of life that's in line with the way of Jesus is the idea that there is as much to be gained, I believe, from believing what Jesus said as there is to doing and living how Jesus lived. Let me repeat that. There is as much to be gained from believing what Jesus said as there is to doing and living how Jesus lived. It's both. I love what uh, author John Mark Comer wrote uh, when he was basically paraphrasing, what does it mean uh, to step into that easy yoke of following Jesus? If you want to experience the life of Jesus, you have to adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. It is in the living out of the lifestyle of Jesus that we actually recover and heal and revive our souls. That's why we see Jesus throughout his ministry, not simply just saying, believe in me, but consistently he offers the invitation, come follow me. See, at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, right, Jesus makes this very clear, that this way of life is something that we should put into practice. At the Sermon on the Mount, think about that, the most beautiful, comprehensive, mind-blowing sermon from Jesus but at its core, it is not a call to simply adopt a theology or a set of ethics. It's an invitation into a lifestyle. We're not just supposed to know about Jesus or even just believe in who he is and what he believed. Jesus himself makes it clear that the invitation is to be like him, to tether to him. Remember at the end of the ministry, he even says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, you tether to me, remain in me. And through the power of the Spirit, live like I do. And you will do the things that I do. You will even do them in greater measure. We are to live the rhythms of Jesus. And that's what rhythms is all about. We want to take Jesus' life as a template for our own life. So that we ultimately find ourselves being his disciples. Right? Being with him. Becoming like him. And doing the things that he did or that he would do now if he were in this circumstance. Right? It's actually fairly straightforward, and it makes complete sense. Yet, as we all know, it is something we often miss the mark on. And that's because our actions are not always in line with our desires. Right? And I believe rhythms, as we're going to roll it out in our community, is something that's going to help us sync up our desires and our actions. It's my prayer that it helps us align our hearts and our way of life together. No guilt trip at all, no obligation, purely an invitation into the dance. It's an invitation into the flow of the Jesus life, into life in all its fullness, the life that honestly, deep down, we crave and we long for because it is the life that we were made for. And I don't just say that to, to sound good. Right? Following Jesus is not just a faith. It's something that we do. We believe and we follow it's a marriage, it's a friendship, it's a way of living. And in that way of living, there is so much grace. There's grace to fall and to fail, and we will. There is grace to not have to get it right, to not have to be strong on our own. There is space and time for rest, for listening and being present. There's a rewiring of our values and our worth. It is a place where your identity is not defined by the world. It is defined in Christ. And your citizenship is not here, but it is in heaven. It's a place where the voice of God is louder than any other voice. It's a place where the supernatural is actually natural. And forgiveness is ongoing. A place where darkness and evil is intentionally pushed aside. It is removed and it is redeemed. It is a place for the goodness and well-being of other people to be pursued fiercely, where all are invited in, the broken, the lost, the foreigner, and the stranger. So that's our invitation, into the unforced rhythms of grace.
into the Jesus way. And it will cost something. In fact, Jesus says it costs everything. It is a redesign to your way of life, a way of life centered on God and the rhythms of heaven. But in doing so, in surrendering that over, by giving over your life to Jesus, he will restore your soul and you will truly live. So as we close on this this opening to rhythms and this invitation into the dance, I want you to pray with me. I'm going to invite you right now to just take a moment and be still, wherever you're sitting or, or watching or listening to this. Perhaps close your eyes just to remove distractions. Jesus, we're so thankful. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, would you speak to us right now? As you just stay in this place, being present with Jesus, I want you to listen to some words from Scripture. Holy Spirit, would you come and awaken fresh revelation right now? Jesus said this, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Stay in that place. Jesus also says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. He says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take a moment and and consider what, what may have already been revealed to you in those texts. Right now, collectively as a community, God, we offer you our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength in this moment. I encourage you right now in your own heart just to release your sense of security and your sense of insecurity, your sense of peace, be in tune with where your sense of anxiety is. Give up your insatiable need to prove yourself. Let's invite Jesus right now to begin to restore your soul. God to begin to minister to you directly right now, revealing to you areas that you need to let go and areas you may need to step into. I just pray right now that you you, you ask yourself, right, if Jesus were to walk into the middle of your day right now, what would he want to say to you? What would he say to you right now? So we pray, Jesus, that we love you. We long to walk in step with your Holy Spirit every piece of every day. We want to live as citizens of heaven right here on earth to rest deeply in you and to take delight in your ways, God. We want to be people of purpose and conviction, of kindness, of peace and joy. Amen. Church, I'm so looking forward to this journey of rhythms this pathway, this lifestyle that we're being offered as we long to step into the way of Jesus in a greater way as his disciples.
so much for worshiping with us this morning. Wellspring, it is my prayer that you go in peace this week, walking in step with the Spirit, attuned to what God is saying through the Word, through prayer, through other people. 
And my hope is that as we step into this new season, as we step into our desire to want to be greater disciples of Jesus, that we step into the rhythms of grace in new ways and we find new life more than we ever could have asked or imagined. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you soon.